What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Brennan, a.k.a. Drip, a.k.a. GG, Galaxy God. And in today's video, I finally got my freaking cards in the mail. Um, mailman been slacking, but it's whatever. Uh, but today we have a um, the Horus version of Galaxy Eyes. I am going to be doing a um, pure version for the people out there who don't want to pay the money for them Seti's Mom Spaghetti's. Trust me, I get it. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I know I get it. They're very expensive, but uh, I really think if you want to play Galaxy Eyes or your Galaxy Eyes fan, to eventually try to buckle down and buy them before they go, like, before they get too, too expensive, more than they already are. I get it. They're already ridiculous, but I think they're going to get worse if and when the Sinful Spoils package gets banned um, or neutered to where it can't be played. So um, I think this is the best way to play Galaxy Eyes is with the uh, uh, horse engine that provides so much follow-up and stuff. Uh, and it just plays, it helps you play through several interactions. Um, but yeah, this list is um, very, very nice. I have, uh, finally have a spicy tech. I know normally if you're a member of the channel and a member of the, um, for a while now, when it comes to my Galaxy House list, I like to try to um, create my own spice, um, or at least a spice card when... Um, I make my own list, and I know the past several ones, they've just been basically cookie cutter, but I actually got some spice for this one in the extra deck, so um, get ready for that. <laughs> but other than that, let's go ahead and get into this video. There's going to be some things that are like kind of familiar with my last list, and some new things as well. Uh, it's all based about around format. Um, started out. We got uh, three Galaxy Eyes, Photon Dragons, standard hand grave deck, same ratio, same rotation. It's always that way. It's always going to be that way. Um, three Wizards still, even though we have um, Delta Wing, this is still a starter. Nonetheless, you don't want to trim out starters. You want to trim out uh, utility cards. You never want to trim out starters. Uh, moving on with the rest of the Galaxy Engine, we have three uh, Soldier. It's a starter, so yeah, three Soldier still. Um, it's been that way forever, and if you've seen my list, it's been that way forever. <laughs> it's too brave still because you still need the extension. Um, cutting this down to one is just not optimal. It's not the right play. Uh, you still, even though you have all the starters, you still um, can kind of brick on starters. I know that sounds weird because we're not used to that <laughs> coming from Galaxy House players, uh, but sometimes you can brick up on starters and you still need your extenders, uh, even with the horse engine. Uh, and then for the one of um, uh, uh, one ofs, we got one Afterglow, one Summoner, one Cleric. Um, I've been preaching about Cleric for three years now, so three or four years now. So, but uh, she is your grind game. She is part of the Zeus combo. Um, if you're new to the channel and don't know what the Zeus combo is, it's a combo that I made a long time ago, like on the, the right round Zeus coming out, uh, where you loop this and Zeus. Um, if you need help finding on the channel, I can put it in the description for you. You can go look at it. Ignore the deck profile and stuff that's in it. Just go, just skip ahead to the Zeus combo and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's basically where you loop this and Zeus and, uh, the key, you use Zeus. You can make a fat Zeus and just use Zeus uh, and then Soul Flare this back and then, uh, Zeus again and Soul Flare back if you just need to keep nuking the board basically. Uh, but this is basically it for the, uh, Galaxy portion of the deck. Now onto the Photons. Uh, it's going to be different compared to some um, some of my previous lists. Um, Delta Wing. Uh, Delta Wing is a very good starter. It's a, it's a one-card starter. It's kind of like, um, uh, it's just as much of a one-card starter as uh, Wizard is, but um, where you still have to kind of, if it gets stopped, then you kind of got to have something else to keep playing through. But it's very nice. Um, more... Um, is I'm on, I'm proxying one jumper only because the mailman is terrible and I ordered it like a week and a half ago and still haven't got my other copy in. Um, but uh, we're running three in this build. If you're running pure, pure, then just run two. But three in this build is because you want to pitch it off in SETI because you go like plus three plus four with that. Um, so uh, three jumper. Um, nothing really needs to be said about that outside of the fact that this is just a starter and you want to maximize your starters. Uh, starter, starter, and then the soldier and wizard. I mean, not soldier, but um, yeah, Gox the soldier. This is gonna be different, and some of y'all are gonna like it, some of y'all are not gonna like it, but it's just my play style and um, consistency over utility. And when I say consistency, is in a form of starters, even though I know this card is consistency, but still, 
I dropped uh, Orbital down to two. You don't need it as much anymore now that we have Delta Wing. It is a good extender because it searches your hand extenders. If your starter gets stopped, I get that. But clogging on this card is not very optimal anymore. And like I said, since we have Delta Wing, we don't really need the extra name any longer. Definitely in the Photon form for like Brave or something like that because we have Delta Wing now. So uh, 2 has been, has been perfect for me through testing. And um, I, I'm not changing it, honestly. And then the 1-ofs, uh, 1 Vanisher... Uh, one Emperor. Um, no Advancer this format. Like I said in my previous videos, Advancer and cards like that are just format situational. Um, and they will come in and out depending on the format or how much extension we need. Uh, no Thrasher. The card is so outdated you don't need it anymore. You just really don't. Um, definitely with all of our other starters and stuff. Um, but that's it for the uh, Photons. Going to be moving on to the next engine, obviously. Um... Sorry about that. My camp, my phone almost died. <laughs> um, but moving on to the next engine. Um, I got three M Sadi, Mom Spaghetti, Vomit on a Sweater already. Um, starter. Only one happy. You don't need the other ones. This card's really fucking cracked. If people are running like um, uh, the other, a Drumataf or whatever his name is, over this one is just wrong. Uh, now, potentially running them both together, that's fine. But run not running this card is just wrong because... This is, if they out anything on your board and you, like, leave this on board, this acts as a, a, a Soul Flare on steroids um, because it, it can add back from Banish Pout or your Graveyard. So you can just add back your fo uh, Galaxy and Photon starters and you just keep playing. Uh, this card is very, very good, and I do not, I, I don't think you should ever not play it. And then this is going to be controversial, but I'm only running one King Sark. I know a lot of people run two. Um... I just didn't want to overclog on this, even though I do get seeing this without Imseti, but also seeing Jumper in hand is really nice. If you want to up your um, deck list to uh, 41 or 42, I can't remember if this deck list, I think this deck's at list at 41. I could be wrong. Um, but if you want to up it, then just run two, then that's perfectly fine. That's you and your playstyle, that's fine. I just didn't want to overcommit to this engine. I just wanted to use this as a supplementary engine because at the end of the day, I didn't want to take away from the fact that this is a Galaxy Eyes Photon deck at heart, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to clog on this. I wanted. I just. I want it when I want it. And even if you see these two in tangent, it's yeah. Oh well, you miss out on your upstart goblin effect. Who who really cares? Um, unless you're absolutely bricked up, and at that point, I highly doubt the upstart goblins are even going to get you out of the get you out of that situation, regardless. Um, so you don't matter. You just use this, pitch this, uh, and then send this, and then there you go. You just bring out whatever you need to. Who cares? You miss out on the upstart goblin effect. Big whoop. Um, but then moving on to the hand traps, non-engine. Uh, you can run. You don't have to run on an engine if you don't want to. But moving forward, post like Phantom Nightmare, um, we're moving into a hand trap format. And yes, Galaxy House is good at breaking boards. I get that, but myself personally, I'm, I don't feel safe enough without them. Definitely against uh, Fire Kings, um, because when they get populous, it's it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a severe problem. Uh, so that's why like three of these hand traps are could potentially change. Uh, just it just depends. But I'm only running six, and I'm running three Ash just because it's the most generic. And then I am running uh, three talents. I put talents back in. Um, because like, I just either want to steal their shit, rip their hand or draw into my, my starters and extenders because this deck, everyone, everyone who plays Galaxy has knows this deck only needs one to two cards to really go off. And sometimes this can help you dig for the rest of your pieces. And this is just the most generic, like it covers everything. Um, it's not the most impact. This card's actually very bad. This format, in my opinion, in the form of trading one for one. Like, you don't get as much value off of this card, but it, there's never a moment, really, where this card's dead against anything, really. That's why I said this is subject to change, um, unless, if you want to play something more high-impact post Phantom Nightmare, make these drolls. If you want to play something that's always live, then keep this as um, Ash. Droll is going to be probably the most impactful card post Phantom Nightmare because voiceless voice, and then when they and then when Fa Fire King gets access to the um, populace, they play into Droll more so than they ever did before. So um, that's why Droll is going to be the most impactful card. 
uh, I think, post uh, Famine Nightmare. But it's up to you. If you want um, versatility, then this. If you want most impactful, then Droll. But that's just me. You can do what you want. But I really wouldn't cut the talents. I keep the talents at three. Because, like I said before, since we're moving into a hand trap format, um, talents is just going to punish the decks who are playing like 14 and 16 hand traps because you're just going to keep playing regardless. Um, and then moving on to the galaxy, uh, spells and traps, even though I'm not running traps, I'm running 300. I know some people run two of this, one of this, et cetera, et cetera. I run three of this because this is a starter. I know once you have one live and you can search it, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we want to draw this because this is the way to really play around draw. Um, because you send this and then you add the trance and then there you go. You're playing around draw. You're live. You're, you're golden, Tony Boy. Uh, so we play three to see get access to it. Not really the fact that we need it in rotation. It is kind of nice, though, to have one in rotation and then searching another one for a follow-up to be able to send another um, photon jumper if need be. But we're mainly running three just to get access to it. Um, so that's why I, I've liked three ever since I ran it. At, I started running it at three. Just me and my play style. Um, and then we are running one expedition because it's, it's situational. I want to minimize situational cards. If you've been a member of the channel for a while now, you know that I like to minimize situational cards. And what I mean by that is like summoning restrictions. Since it says you have to have a level five or higher galaxy or photon monster. Granted, I get all of our entire deck is, but this is also a hard one's return. So, um, and it's, and it's situational to where you have to control. What if you have a bunch of level fours in your hand? You can't use this and it's just a dead card. That's why we don't run it multiples. And you can just recycle it with cleric if need be. Um, and then the last two cards in the deck is Trance and Numbers Last Hope. I know um, you've heard me say stuff in the past about Numbers Last Hope, and I still stand by what I said. It's just, I would if I'm running Pure, I'm not running this. If I'm running Horse, then I'm running this. Because this is a worse version of this, in my personal opinion, but we run this because we get, if we open a Horus combo, then we don't worry about searching this, we just search this. Um, it is really nice in this to even like resolve like potentially like both, but... Um, um, it's, it's, it's very good in this. I've never found myself needing it in pure, but in this version, it's really nice for the extra extender and potential follow-up. Um, and, yeah. But also, the uh, Spice card I'm running the extra deck actually gets fueled by this card, so uh, you'll see that when we get there. Um, speaking of the extra deck, let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck. Um, extra deck's going to uh, be kind of straightforward, but it's also going to kind of piss people off at the same time, but just, just hear me out in my explanations. Uh, we got two Soul Flare, standard. Little Knight, standard. If you can't afford Little Knight, then put a random rank 8 of your choice in there or put Dujinki Ashima back in. Now that we have a bunch of level 4s in our deck, more so than I probably have ever had, then Bujinki Ashima will be very good. It's also a back row popper, and it helps you play around Nib. You've heard me, you've heard me preach that for years now. Bujinki Ashima helps you play around Nib. Um, because it's all the summon from graveyard and XC summon is all in one summon. So uh, if you're trying to make a number ninety, but and it it's it helps you play around nip. Uh, this is that for the link monsters, but yeah, if you can't afford SP Little Knight, put in a, a random rank eight or Bujinki Ashima, preferably Ashima in my personal opinion, because like you could potentially like pop a um, Fire King Sanctuary or whatever else back row if you don't have any back row removal on your main deck and you're like going second or whatever. Um, I sold both of copies of my Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, uh, number 90, um, so I'm proxying one. I sold them because it's a $80 price tag, and it's kind of silly not to sell them when they're going to be a promo in the next set, and I'm not really playing nothing but meta right now because I was also waiting on the Delta Wing to come out before I played this deck again, so, um, it's not even really meta, it's just Rogue, I'm playing Orcus. Um, but... So I was like, all right, cool. I can just sell them and then get them for like penny stock because they're going to be a promo, which means they'll be like $5, $10 max. So like I, I didn't want to lose out on like a freaking $60, $70 uh, value when they're being reprinted in less than a month. So I sold both of them. So that's why I'm proxying this one. And normally I know I am on two. I still kind of think that you need to play two, not because you're going to use its effect or need its effect to come up. It's because it's a better bridge to your full armor and your cypher blade than burning your cypher dragon 
That's the reason why I always preach too. Not because you're going to need its effect to come up in a game because the game's going to be over by that point. I get that. But in a grind game, I don't want to burn my um, Cypher Dragon if I don't need to. So I'd rather burn a second copy of Lord. Um, moving on to the rest of the uh, extra deck, we got 138. So 190, 1 number 90, 1 number 38. This is very good in the horse version of the deck. It's also very good at being able to stop um, Sanctuary or Fire King Island or whatever else um, is uh, problematic because spells, are, in my opinion, are coming more problematic as the format shifts. So uh, hitting like a wanted with this is very, very crucial or, or something like that. Sorry, I hit the, the, um, the stand. Uh, one Mr. OTK boy himself, number 62. Um, one steroids, uh, 62, uh, we'll clear the board, call it a day. Uh, one cypher, speaking of the devil, uh, a lot of this is straightforward and cookie cutter. Um, one, mister, you can't touch me for two turns and I can summon some XZ back from graveyard for free on standby fade, blah, blah, blah. Um, one cypher blade. And then for the fours, I if you're wanting to know where full armor is, it's my favorite. It's my favorite card in the entire X deck, but I cut it. The only reason why is because of, like I'm mainly building this for Fire Kings because I'm afraid we're going to be coming close to a tier zero format, and it likes its stuff to be popped. And this is less situational than full armor. Full armor can only pop face ups. This is can pop face ups and face downs. And with that being said, I don't think we're going to be in a format to where doing a double pop is very like very impactful like it usually is trust me there will be a time where i put him back in probably next format or whatever because he is my favorite one just know if i'm cutting him then i have a lot of play test in where he doesn't come up as much as slapper blade does uh, and i had to make room for other stuff uh fours we got one photon dragon one Star Liege, and then the generics. We got Zeus because this is going to be the most impactful card this format. Just not a, like non target destruction or target sending is going to be very impactful. So the Zeus combo line, like making like a um, Cypher and then slapping uh, this on top is going to be huge. Um, so yeah, that card is going to be very good this format. And then one Typhon. Um, Typhon's Typhon. Don't make don't play Typhon if you can't play Little Knight. If you don't own a Little Knight, then don't play Typhon. Uh, cut this for your uh, second Lord, um, in my personal opinion, um, or full armor, whatever you see fit, um, because you need to be able to unlock yourself from this card uh, because it turns off all your stuff. That's why a lot of people kind of stray uh, away from it. But making this sitting on and bouncing something, sitting on it for a turn. And then making a little knight, and then yeah, killing them. Um, and then the last card in the extra deck um, is very super saucy and super spicy, and it, I actually really love this card because when you pair it with Numbers Last Hope, it really makes your board very oppressive if you go full combo uninterrupted. And um, I just wanted more versatility out of Numbers Last Hope. I hate where <clears throat> I hate it to the point to where like I can't make random rank, uh, rank i have to i'm forced to make rank eights i want to be able to make rank fours or rank eights if i need to with numbers last hope because with the horus version um you can easily spam out rank eight so there's a situation where you can go number 90 and still make number 38 with your horus engine and then you have numbers last hope you can't do nothing with it because not very many people uh have experimented with um rank fours and i found literally the perfect rank four um and that is uh, number 106 this card is very freaking good. If you don't know what it does, it's a basically infinite impermanence for as long as this card's on the field. So it's a permanent negate for as long as this card's on the field. Um, and it's generic, just two level fours. Um, and you make it with numbers last hope, or you can just hard make it if need be. So like if you go full combo now, you can end on your standard protection board with like um, uh, you, you made uh, the Cypher X for protection and you already burn it and make Link it away, but you end on Soul Flare, uh, Blast, uh, Soul Flare, Blast, Jumper, not Jumper, shit, Photon Dragon, uh, 90, and then like 38 or, or a combination of that. 
with this and it's very nasty definitely if you pair it with like if you have like an ash or something hand you're just not you're not losing because you have this is a negate 90 is a negate 38 is a negate soul flare is a pop and then you have follow up on hand um and then ripping from their x check two with um number 100 i mean number 100 uh galaxy 100 god dude i can't think uh galaxy 100 <laughs> not number 100 yeah big punch for 9k from what number 100 <laughs> um but yeah this card's actually really cracked uh, it's very super spicy like super uh juicy too definitely through testing this card's nasty um like i said i just want to get the most utility and most mileage out of all the cards that i play um but other than that there's nothing i would really change out of the extra deck and perhaps um like I really would like to play a second Lord Alone because I don't like burnt. Like I said, I don't, I don't, when I'm trying to make like a Cypher Blade, I don't want to burn it. Um, but other than that, I really like the extra deck. It's very, very clean, very straightforward, very meta heavy. So like it's very good against meta. Um, but other than that, that's that's it for the deck. I don't have a side deck because it's not a tournament deck profile. But if you want to know a side deck, I can basically tell you. Um, I bumped Tachyon up to three. Put Evenly to three. Three Droplets. Um, and then you can put, um, two to three bell in there and the thing, three, six, nine, 10, 11, um, 10, 11, um, evenly, I already said that, so three evenly, three tachyon at six, um, three droplet, that's nine, uh, let's go ahead and say three bell because of, uh, fire kings and for labyrinth. Uh, so 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, for the last three, you can put um, one Duster and two Droll Mockbird, and you would have a very well rounded side deck. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the uh, main and extra deck. Uh, I really like this list. Um, like I said, the Ash Blossoms are subject to change, uh, just depending on how the format goes and your personal play style. So be the judge of that, how you see fit and um, adjust it to your uh, locals or wherever you're taking this. If you're taking this to a bigger event, I'd probably lean towards the um, high impact potentially, or or if you just don't want to risk it, then just go with the versatility route and play Ash. Uh, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the profile, and be on the lookout for the pure version, because I'm going to have the pure version out um, very soon. If you want to see like a combo guide with this version of the deck or the pure version after I have it out, um, just let me know in the comment section and get this video to y'all usually like destroy that like button with, um, this and I'm very grateful. So we get this to, let's say 30 likes, this video to 30 likes. I know y'all can definitely do that. I'll show you the combo. I'll show you the combo video or not really combo, but combo slash test hand, probably just a test hand, um, and, and go in more depth with the discussion and stuff. So get this video to 30 likes and, um, I'll show you guys a the test hand video. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you all are staying safe out there. And I hope um, I see you in the next one. It's your boy, Brandon, a.k.a. Drip, a.k.a. GG, Galaxy God. Signing out until next time. Peace. Good to win, my guys.